Hey there beautiful teachers. In this video I'm going to show you how to use MuseScore to notate student compositions. You can even have students do them themselves once they get over eight or nine years old. But even if you're doing it yourself it's super simple, super easy to do and MuseScore is totally free. So this is an awesome way to get your students compositions notated if you're doing one of our composition projects. Get them all notated and you can put them together in a book or print them out for your students. Super fun. Let me show you how to get started. The first thing you'll need to do of course is to download and install MuseScore. MuseScore is an open source software meaning it is completely free to download and install so you just go to musescore.org and it's a free download right there. It'll probably detect which operating system you're using. I'm on a Mac right now. It might show Windows for you. If it's not the correct one, you can of course look for the correct one on their site and download that for your system. It's a pretty simple install, so I won't go through all of that, but you just download it there and install it on your computer. Then when you open it up for the first time, you're gonna see something like this. What we're going to do is create a piano composition in MuseScore, hopefully have one prepared there in rough work that we can input into the computer. So the first thing we need to do is create a new file. So we're going to go to File and New and enter the title here. So your piece name, subtitle if you want it, your name for the composer if you composed it, and any copyright you. Click continue and then since it's going to be for piano alone I like to just choose grand staff here. You can also uh, specifically select piano but then it'll put the little piano um, signs beside it. It'll say piano there and we don't necessarily want that so just go to grand staff, hit continue select the correct key signature. Let's say for example it's in F major, I'll select that one. And then the time signature, mine's going to be a 3-4. I'm not going to have a pickup bar, but if I did that's where I would enter it. And it's only going to be 16 bars long. Click on done. Great, so that's basically set up for us now and ready to go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to space it out over four lines just to make the reading more comfortable. So if I just click on the fourth bar line, one, two, three, four, click there so it goes blue and hit return or enter on your keyboard. And do that again and again. So now we have four lines of four bars or four measures each. So that just makes it easier to input but of course you can set it up based on the way that will work for your composition. Now I'm going to change some of the settings in terms of the size because this is a little bit tight for beginner piano music of this length. So I'm going to go to Format and Page Settings and I'm going to change the staff spacing to 2.2 .2, which is quite large and a bit comfier for beginners to read. Click on OK and now you see it pretty much fills the whole page right there. I'm also going to change the font while we're here so I'll go to format and I'll go to style. I'm going to change the font for the title sorry it's under text styles down the bottom here title you can change that to whatever you want I'm going to do Jill Sands and we'll also change that. I can do these both together for the composer as well to the same font. You can change any of the fonts you want here. So anything you want to change, that's where you do that. That's all I'm going to do for now though. I'm happy with the way they show the bar numbers by default. Then I need to enter my notes. So I'm going to click on the N up here and then select the type of note I want here and start entering them. So if I want to change the value of the note, I just change it there.
and just click on the place where it goes. Okay, so you can enter your melody there using that method. You can also learn the shortcuts for these if you want to get a bit faster, but I suggest getting going with just your mouse. And then once you get used to that, you can learn the shortcuts later um, and to make things a bit faster. Let's just put in some left hand notes here. Now, let's say, for example, that this is actually repeated three times in my piece. So I'm going to just copy and paste that rather than entering it every time. So if I click in the bar, but not on this note, I'll select that bar in that clef. And if I hold down shift and click inside this bar up here, it'll select everything between those two. So that's the full area. I can then go to edit and copy and then select the bar where I want that to start again and go to edit and paste. Of course you can use the shortcuts if you already know them. I'm doing everything through the menu so you can see what's going on. So there's only one B theme in this piece so I'm going to enter that now. Okay. Anytime you want to play back your composition, you're going to click on the note where you want to start playing from and hit the space bar. And if you want it to stop playing, you just hit space again. So that's the basics put in. We're now going to add some articulation and dynamics to our piece. So over in this side panel here, you'll see articulation we'll go there to add a few things in. I'm going to add a fermata to my last note. So I just click and drag that onto the note. I can also click on the note itself and double click on the articulation. Either way works just fine. I'm going to add a slur to this one here. Now the slur is not under articulation, it's under lines. So click, double click there. And let's say both of these are going to be staccato, so I select both of them by holding down shift and clicking on both, and then double click there. I'll just add a few more things in here. And if you play through a section with the articulation, you'll hear it in the playback. So, the staccato is never super sharp, but it does give you a sense of it. Now we're going to add some dynamics. So I'm going to close those and open up the dynamics panel. Okay, so again I can click and drag these or I can select the note where I want them to go and double click. Just note that if you select the left hand it will actually go below because it assumes you mean just for the left hand. So you'll have to select a right hand note for it to go in the centre. If you want to do a hairpin crescendo that's under lines and you need to select how long you want it to be. So select the first note and then the last note of the range of the line. And you can go like that, and the same way for diminuendo. If you ever think they're slightly misaligned, you can select them and just use the arrows to nudge them across the arrows on your keyboard. Okay, those will also be reflected in the playback.
Okay, let's say that now I've heard it a couple of times, I actually think it's getting a bit too samey, and I want to put one of the sections up an octave. Well, this is very quick to do. I'm just going to select everything that I want, so just the right hand in this case. Select all of it by clicking on the first note, holding shift and clicking on the last note. And then on your keyboard you can click on command and then the up arrow or control and then the up arrow if you're on a Windows PC. And that will send everything up an octave. You can also move things slightly by using the up and down arrows in general. The last thing we're going to add here to our simple piano composition is the tempo mark. Now there are some tempo marks already included. You can find them under tempo right here. So you can set it based on numbers, beats per minute, or you can use the preset words here, like moderato. And if you just click on the first note in the piece and then double click on it, that'll add same as articulation and dynamics. Now if the tempo mark you want to use is not there, or you want to use an expression mark instead, you can just type that in. So if you double click on the text, you can type it in. Just know that it won't be necessarily reflected in the tempo that it plays back at. That will be set based on what you actually selected or the tempo that you have set at the outset. That's pretty much our composition done and ready to go. The last thing we're going to add to our composition is a few fingering numbers to help people to play it more easily. So if you look at my composition here, it's going to be pretty comfortable if I start with one on C. So let's just put that in for people so they know where to place their hands to start. So we'll go to fingering over here, click on the note you want to put the finger number on, and double click on the finger number. Simple as that. I'll do the same thing for the left hand. Left hand should start with finger 5 on the C there. And I'm also going to put the 1 in here and the 5 in here as we have to move at those points. So again, just to be friendly to the player and make sure they know everything that they need to do. That's pretty much our composition done. If you want to print it out, you can do so directly from here, or you can export it to PDF if you want to send it somewhere else. Just go to File and Export, and you can select PDF there if it's not already, and send it wherever you want it to go. Have fun! Bye.